Oh my god. Six months since February, mid-February, early February to uh, mid-late July. I have seen over 900 episodes. I have caught up to One Piece, the anime, and I cannot believe myself. <laughs> Holy crap, I remember last year I saw Naruto, you would see my like, it's like 30 minute review of Naruto. I talked for like an hour, but I edited down a little. And I was like, oh wow, 700 episodes, this is insane. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do One Piece. I probably won't do it. I'll leave One Piece. And then I can't remember why, but in February this year, I decided to watch it. But I did enjoy the One Piece and I've caught up. Because I've got a friend, um, Jason, who's really into One Piece and everything. And last time I like saw, met him in person, I believe it was for dinner I had for my birthday. Or oh, lunch it was, I think, yeah. Um, in, and that was in February, early February. And um, since I've seen him, I haven't seen him since then. And in between the time that I've seen him, I haven't seen him, I've managed to catch up to One Piece. And I think that's just insane to think about. The next time I meet him, maybe he'll see this video, because he did see the Naruto one. He said he wanted to talk in person, but then um, you know, that was we never ended up doing it, even though you know he did message me like at the start of this year, end of last year or something. It's been a while, but nonetheless, uh, he didn't even message me or whatever. But let's see if he messages me about One Piece once he sees this video. <laughs> So yeah, this video itself is going to be a long, long video because um, there are there's almost 900 episodes to talk about uh, and I do have some notes. I'll put them on the side there. I only did start taking notes um, during uh, the Marine Ford arc. Yeah, so my, my memory of like everything be before that is just going based on my memory and what I remember and uh, seeing how it's so many episodes, that's I won't be able to remember as much as I would with the more recent and episodes and everything after the uh, Marine Ford arc. <laughs> There's so much I want to talk about. Uh, but I just, I don't really know how to talk about it all. So let me do my best and, you know, bear with me. The opening arcs, East Blue arcs, where you get introduced to the main st Straw Hats and obviously more do join later on as we see. Um, but where we get introduced to a Sop, Nami and Zoro. Zoro is easily, he was the moment I met him, my favorite character, and he is still to this day my favorite Straw Hat, my favorite One Piece character. I get introduced to each of these characters, and then you get one backstory, I'm like, oh man, that's pretty sad, Zoro. You get Usopp's backstory, I'm like, oh man, that's pretty sad, Usopp. I'm like, oh, it's kind of annoying, but you know what, maybe maybe I'll, I'll deal with it or something. You get um, Sanji's backstory, like, oh damn, this hits. You get Nami's backstory, oh damn, this hits. I cannot like I remember so well every time I saw one of these backstories and got interested in the character I cried watching this show and honestly that has happened with every single straw hat backstory we've got so far but that comes with a bit of a big problem which happens with 90% of One Piece and that's the animation and the fights are really mediocre for the most part it sucks because Wano is a really good is a huge step up for everything and um, hopefully they can continue that momentum but overall the fights were just boring really poorly animated there were so many shots where they held on something for a really long time or the pacing was just really terrible and it wasn't as bad in these early arcs I found I quite enjoyed it or maybe that was just me getting into the groove and really enjoying everything buggy all that happened in Orange Town. All that happened where uh, Goldie Roger died. I can't remember the name of the town right now. Is it Logtown or something? Smoker is definitely one of my favorite characters as well. He started like I love how all these characters from early on play, you know, such a big role later on. I was a little confused by something that happened at the end of Alabaster with him, but I'll get to that later if I do remember. But yeah, the pacing of the show is is really bad at the start. It's not. It's not too bad, but it gets worse later on. So when we move on to Drum Island, so we're going into the Grand Line, and um, I, when I first saw this, I was like, okay, we're gonna spend uh, East Blue, we're gonna go to West Blue, uh, North Blue, uh, South Blue, all this kind of stuff, and then we'll get to the Grand Line. But then no, we you go from straight to East Blue to the Grand Line, I'm like, holy crap, that's insane, how quickly is this thing moving? And that's the thing, I was like, okay, the pacing's not bad, because it got to that point. So yeah, Drum Island itself, we get introduced to Tony Tony Chopper. Uh, you know, such a cute little reindeer. Uh, one, such a great arc as well, Drum Island, when we get introduced to Chomper, or was it the... No, the guy who eats metal or whatever. He ate the Chomp Chomp fruit. I can't remember his name right now. But he comes back later on as well in the Reverie? Ravine? 
arc or something and uh yeah it's it's a really fun arc all the characters are really cool to see oh we get to introduce the vivi summer in the little bit before this and um yeah i i enjoy vivi as there's a huge problem with like one piece and it's princesses princes and all these royalty things later on which i really hate and i remember thinking of vivi i was a little annoyed of her um but I, I got through it i enjoyed her enough and i enjoyed everything else that was going on enough to kind of let her slide but if i rewatched this thing and i looked back at vivi i'd be like yeah she's also very annoying that's a big problem with one piece and it's princesses and princesses i wish they were a lot more competent instead of all being so useless and annoying <laughs> but um yeah we'll, we'll deal with that later on when we get to dressrosa and stuff oh man Drum Island, it's so fun. You know, in all these arcs, we kind of just set up a character and you kind of just explore the world. It's a lot of fun. It's so great to see these characters interact. And, you know, each of them has their own little goal, which I forgot to say later on, which I kind of forget what Chopper's goal is. I, I think he just wants to be a doctor on a pirate ship, but yeah, I can't remember. So I got a message and then I was like, oh, I forgot I was meant to do that. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, everyone's goal. So you have Luffy wanting to uh, be the Pirate King, Sanji wanting to find the old blue, Zoro wanting to be the best swordsman, Nami wanting to make a map of the whole world and everything. And uh, it, they're really cool goals, you know, obviously large goals, which, you know, means this can go on for a really long time like it does. And, um, uh, one problem I do have with the goals is that uh, maybe I'll touch on this a little later when new characters get introduced but um, a lot of the time I find with One Piece is that a lot of characters you know every character ha is great in their own way because they each have this arc dedicated to them they have their own story but then there comes an arc where they really don't do anything or a good few hundred episodes where they kind of just stagnant and normally that's fine because like Luffy He's one of those passive characters where he doesn't really change all that much apart from, you know, getting stronger, all that kind of stuff. But then for the most part, he's the same, but he introduces change to those around him. Um, and it really feels like one of the reasons I don't like Luffy is because sometimes he gets on my nerves a lot, especially during Alabasta. I found him very annoying for some parts of that. Um, but then uh, he, the core cool people around him, he introduces change to. But then once their arc is done, he doesn't really introduce too much to them all a lot of people that with the main characters just stay stagnant for a very long time and it feels that way as well especially because there are so many episodes that and the pacing is also really bad but that stagnant character just feels dragged on and it feels like this is a waste of a character but then you get to a good part where the character really does something and something changes and you're like oh, okay raw this is really good so that's one problem i have where it's like Sanji is not really doing anything or nothing's really tying in with Sanji finding the um, all blue. It's just, uh, you know, for the most part, until we get to Whole Cake Island, I feel like Sanji was, he's definitely not one of my favorite characters. But until you get to Whole Cake Island, that's not really, he's really just stagnant and just, you know, obsessing over ladies and everything. And I, I really did enjoy it. They would, should have been like little tidbits of him you know, with the all blue, like there was with Zoro being the wanting to become the greatest swordsman. He finds, uh, you know, one of the legendary swords. He meets another swordsman or he, you know, needs to become the better swordsman. So by fighting so many strong people, he becomes better and he's getting closer to his goal. Nami, you see her, I don't really see her drawing all that many maps. So it really feels like her character is really stagnant because I'm assuming in her free time, she's drawing a map of the world or something. So it just started raining, the sun's gone out of the, behind the clouds and everything, so I've turned on some lights. Uh, but yeah, Nami's pretty, like, you don't see her drawing all these maps and doing all these kind of things. Um, but you, often, every so often you may, but uh, honestly, it feels like only a few characters are building to their goal. But nonetheless, we get to Alabasta and... It is really good. <laughs> I really enjoyed Alabasta overall seeing Ace for the first time. I was like, his brother? I had a feeling it was his brother. It is his brother. Smoke is back, which is so cool to see. We get introduced to Nico Robin, my second favorite character in all of One Piece and everything. And um, the Poneglyphs, um, you know, Vivi Summers thing. One, the, okay, look, I gotta, yeah, this is here. One other big thing, which I really don't like about One Piece is that so many characters don't die too few characters die and you know it's kind of changed in the one arc i will say that one arc really feels like a huge step up character death wise and everything but in especially for i'd say 90 percent of the show characters sh like you know get implied that they're dead 
but they they don't die they come back and they survive and in alabasta i can think of like a few examples one is that guy with the wig like the judge wig looking hair he gets that dies in an explosion he just comes back later on and you have the eagle guy who flies up into the sky with the bomb turns out he's alive and everything uh it's just all the enemies they face so all the numbers number one two three and everything yes bon clay yes he is so fun and he's like uh, he's fun to see in the alabaster that he he gets only gets better from here on out uh, but uh yeah, they all get knocked out, and that's one other huge problem I had. I had it in my notes, and luckily I just remembered. In all these early arcs, it feels like the like Straw Hats, they keep, keep getting beaten and beaten and beaten. And then they get one advantage, and they land one punch, or maybe two punches, or something, and they completely trash the enemy, and the enemy gets knocked out. And I'm like, that's a little too easy if you ask me. Like, you, yeah, I know, and that makes it seem like I don't enjoy it, but honestly... With all these flaws that I personally don't enjoy, I still found so much enjoyment out of it. Otherwise, I would have stopped this show. You know, this is like, I don't know how many episodes it's into, but that's like at least well over 100, 200 maybe by the time we get to Alabaster. And um, the world's only growing and it's getting bigger. And at this point, I thought, okay, so this is him. He's just going to end up taking down each warlord one at a time or something like that. And, you know, it definitely did surprise me, the overall story. Oh wow, okay, we're talking for quite a while and we are only of the Sky Islands. And at this point, I East Blue, like Ark and everything that happened at East Blue, the whole saga there was my favorite. And then Sky Islands happened. Jaya, uh, I remember was I can't remember the guy's name, the guy with the spring spring fruit or whatever. I was like, oh, this guy looks pretty cool. And then um Luffy trashes him, which was amazing to see. Uh, but then you get the Sky Islands. Everything there is just so cool and wonderful to see. I love Eneru, he's one of my favorite villains. He's he's definitely up there as one of my favorite villains. I don't know why he looks amazing, he was so powerful, and it it's just you know, it's one of those things where it's like um, characters have, as we see later on, hockey and all these other powers and everything. And you're like, a straw hat sh should have died so many times before getting to Shabbaty and everything like that. And, um, you know, this is an example of where, you know, they could have, they easily could have, because Eneru, you know, was so much more powerful than Luffy. But then because Luffy, you know, this is just good thinking from Oda, and, you know, he does a lot of good thinking and planning in this. He has an electric guy go against rubber so it makes sense that luffy would be you know more superior in this battle um but yeah and you know obviously you have the obvious tarzan references and everything like that zoro getting lost it's so fun to see um but then this also has one of the other problems like i brought up you have a fake death out where oh the father clearly gets hit by this huge lightning blast and then he he survives and it's like oh yay i guess um and also survives. He just goes off in the space, in not space, in the sky. Um, hopefully, he comes back because, like I said, I really did enjoy him. But yeah, you definitely get the backstory. There is really cool to see of the people going up from the land into the sky, and then the interactions and everything. And then, uh, yeah, I was gonna bring up something that comes up in Wano arc, but I'll, I'll get to that when I get to Wano. Moving on after that, uh, Sky PR is so far my favorite arc. Uh, Yes, you get more Nico Robin in it, which is, a, is really cool. And I was wondering, at one point, I was like, when are we going to get Nico Robin's backstory and everything like that? Um, and it, I thought we'd get it there, but we didn't because she joined in Alabasta. I thought the next arc would be hers. But no, we get it a little later on. And in between all this, we still have the Foxy Pirates arc. And I also really love this arc. I know a lot of people will say it's bad or it's filler-like. And yes, the Foxy Pirate has come back in some filler episodes. Some are good, some are bad. But in this arc itself, the power of the afro, just the games itself, how much fun everyone is having. Nico Robin, whenever she has an attitude, I just love how she just switches sides and everything. And it, 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 it's it's so much fun. I, I really just love it all. And, you know, for an arc which feels really joking and really stupid and everything, it came at a perfect time. And then you get into some really heavy arcs after this. With my two favorite arcs, Water 7 and Ennis Lobby. I'll argue with you, if you say Ennis Lobby is not one of the best arcs, in One Piece, you are kidding yourself because we get introduced to Frankie, who is very super, and he is my third favorite character in One Piece because um, he's so much more fun than anyone else. He's got all these cool ideas and gadgets and everything. It's so cool to see. We get Nico Robin's backstory, and he explores this whole world of Water 7, and the whole world just expands massively when we get one of the weapons, um, which uh. 
I can't remember which one it was now. Was this Neptune or I can't remember what it was called, Pluto or something? But it was really cool to see Tom's workers and everything, you know, tying more to Roger and you know, all that's going on. Oh, I don't, honestly, it was just, do I have anything in this? I don't, I hate, I don't have. Oh, okay, no, I got one piece of notes that I wrote down here. Um, Luffy, he gets beaten by uh, Cypher Pole 9 and everything. And then he comes up with second and third gear. And they explain how he thinks of th second gear. He's like doing, uh, accelerating his body or something like that. I don't know when he also thought about doing third gear or anything like this. He's on the train and he's like, I've got some new techniques I want to try out. When did you come up with this? Because like the last time you just got it, like last time you didn't have a little break from the last time you fought. And he got thrashed when he fought. He was stuck in between the um, roofs and everything. That was really funny to see. And it's one of these things where uh, you, everyone, they get like the whole soap soap fruit and that giraffe fruit and everything. And then I love how one of them just so happens to have to be a good swordsman. So that way Zoro has a swordsman and fight. And then Sanji, like the way that they look when they get affected by that soap soap fruit is really cool. Nami gets some time to shine. Chopper becomes that huge as monster, which is so cool to see. And oh yes, yeah, since We Are is easily the best One Piece opening, we get the, my next few favorite OPs with Water 7 and then uh, NS Lobby. I think they're the next best OPs that in One Piece itself. Nika Robin's moment where she's like, I want to live and everything. If you've seen my mix, my chill mix, you saw me draw Nika Robin, you saw me also make a, a chill beat with uh, some of that dialogue from that scene itself. Soga King and everything, you know, Frankie's boys and everything. I can't remember what if they're called Frankie's boys, but yeah, they're all in it. It's such a... It's such a fun, but then also so serious arc and such an amazing way to explore the world and, you know, grow the marine side of aspects. Because, you know, before this, the marines, apart from Smoker, weren't all that much of a threat from what I remember. Because, look, they weren't in Foxy, they weren't in Sky Island, Smoker was in Alabasta, and then before that, there was only really Smoker as well, from what I remember, at least. Maybe I was wrong because I am trying to remember a lot of this off the top of my head. Holy crap, there are a lot of episodes. Kobe. That's his name. Kobe, I'm thinking of. Um, you get his, him as well, his little story arc going on, uh, meeting with Luffy and everything, and then carrying on now. Um, and then you see all these, like, the hypnosis guys in it. The guy from um, the cafe pirate ship or the restaurant pirate ship is in it. And then carrying along is also really cool to see. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm probably missing a lot of stuff I would love to have talked about before you know i should maybe i should have done a midway video or something but i'm trying to cram everything into one long video so let's move on to thriller bark arc you know at the end of this this is yeah you know what i'm only going to cut a lot of what i say out but then at the end i'll just give a quick ranking of each of the arcs in my opinion and then that way i can kind of simplify everything so thriller bark arc for the most part this was a pretty all right arc maybe it's also because it came off the back of ns lobby you know ns lobby was such a high especially for me this was mediocre until the end where it got really good with Brooke's backstory. And, you know, the music in One Piece, it's good. It's nowhere near, like, levels of other anime that you've seen out there or just other shows in general. But Bing Sake, holy crap, is that an amazing tune. And you get so emotional with Laboon and everything like that. Brooke's backstory is so, it's so good. Can't remember the guy's name now. Kurama or something with the poor, poor fruit. When he comes and he takes everyone out. And stuff like that you know that was really cool to see one problem i did have with this as well is that when he uses that air compression thing and he blasts everyone away no one dies and i'm like yeah sure we find a lola later is uh um big mama's daughter but none of her pirates die either or anything like that and it's like how how like i like sure you know you're from the new world and everything like that but then i don't know it just felt like for such an attack that was built up so much no one died and kind of took away from his attack and everything, especially when he uses it later on in Marine Ford and everything. I'm like, yeah, it's not that dangerous. No one died before. So, <laughs> but then Zoro takes all of Luffy's pain. And like I said, Zoro is my favorite character. You know, Sanji, you know, I, I feel like Sanji is just le a lesser Zoro and just a worse character because especially for the most part up until this point, and I think for a good while still beyond this point, he's just a very ladies man ladies man ladies man that's really all he does in almost every arc yeah so when i was talking about characters yeah nika robin her character arc is also one which kind of you know although we see her backstory and that's a really good point of it in a high beyond that it's not like it gets bad or anything because 
her goal is to research all the poneglyphs. I can't imagine the amount that she's probably missed, considering, you know, there's so many different paths to take on the Grand Line. But um, as long as she keeps on finding poneglyphs and she keeps on exploring more of the world, her story arc is still growing, developing. Frankie's is just making a ship which will get to the end of the world and everything. So as long as he keeps upgrading the ship, which he does, his character arc is also still going on. So their character arcs wise, although, you know, a slow build, uh, you know, it's still somewhat growing in my opinion, so I have no issues with theirs there. So now done with Thriller Bark, let's quickly just talk about Shabadi Arc, and I thought this was amazing. Um, you know, getting reintroduced to Hachi, and I th this is this is the point where I really blocked myself off from ca character injuries or deaths because um, after I thought he was gonna die, Hachi. Um, and he survived, I was like, okay, yeah, this is too much for me. Too many characters seem like they're gonna die, but then they don't die and they survive and everything like that. And yeah, at that point, although I did enjoy the arc, I really like blocked myself off and really, it was one too many. And at that point I kind of like, okay, if a character dies, I might be emotional, but I don't think I'm gonna get too invested in a character's death, which was really bad because of the upcoming arc. The way everyone got separated, it was emotional that part, seeing everyone get separated. Um, and you knew that they were going to their each own place, where they were going to train and stuff like that. And here I think for the next two arcs, the pacing is really bad. Because you get Impel Down, which I think is really cool, especially because that Poison Guard guy is really OP and everything. You meet, uh, you know, some, the numbers again, Crocodile again. Uh, buggy again and everything and it's really cool to see you get introduced to Jinbei um, and then you have the Marine Ford War arc and I'm basically going to combine these two because they're so intertwined with one another and uh, yeah people say Marine Ford arc is one of the best arcs in all of anime and everything I have to disagree there I think Marine Ford is not all that great an arc I think it's 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 good but it suffers from a lot of problems um, from One Piece that really just combine all together. Like, they did a great job in setting up Whitebeard, you know, although being the strongest pirate there is, you know, he's sick. So we see him there without all those tubes and everything, and we know, okay, he can't be as good as he normally would be. Like, as funny as Buggy and Mr. Three and everything were, um, they got a little, I, I was like, they're really these prisoners, they're meant to be like really tough prisoners that are locked away on all these different levels. But they're so easily just following an idiot like Bucky. Um, I'm laughing about it. So I still do enjoy it. But at some point I was like, really? Okay. Um, but yeah, you got stuff like that going on. And, um, you know, everything going on with Ace. I, at this point, the reason, one, the biggest reason why Marine Ford doesn't work for me is not only the pacing, because I think the whole battle is messy and the geography of it and everything is, is really poorly done. Because Luffy took so long to get to the wall when he could have easily and it felt more Luffy like to just do gum gum rocket off the ship and get as far as he can all the way there. I, why that didn't happen is beyond me and why he was just running. Sure he's not thinking clearly but it makes more sense for him to just rocket in instead of trying to run in and everything. Anyway. Oh I forgot to mention we get introduced to Akaji in um what was it Water 7 or did we get introduced to him in Water 7 or was it during the foxy pirate but anyway we got introduced to him and he's really cool and everything we also get introduced to like some of the subordinates and everything like that uh more of the marines and everything like that whitebeard's pirates marco and everything which is really cool to see whitebeard using the tremor tremor food and everything is 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 it's 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 a cool power and definitely definitely very strong but i wonder what their plan was if erikaji didn't freeze the water at the base because all his strongest people are devil fruit eaters we like your ships would have just been destroyed or something like that or you would have just had to defend your ships if you couldn't swim there or get the boats to the um you know the dock or whatever in time and everything like that um but yeah i think the pacing in this is really bad i think the the layout of the battle is really bad because it just seems very messy everything that's going on the biggest reason like i was mentioning earlier which i didn't actually get to why this marine fort arc doesn't just work for me is because of ace like I think Ace is a cool character, he had a lot of potential, but he got killed off way too easily, I'll say, and also way too soon, because we only meet him like three different times. You got this arc, you got that time in Alabasta, and then you've got when he's facing Blackbeard. I know he also runs into Buggy, but you don't really learn anything about him there, and there's not enough time for me to care about the character 
in the way that Luffy reacts to caring about him and everything. So because of that, I was I remember watching this and I was like, oh, I, I've got a feeling they're going to save him and then he's just gonna, still going to die and everything like that. And like I say here, it's bad, but it's not terrible though and stuff like that. Impel Down, Snake Island stuff, the Bubble Play stuff, and the ending of the war were good. But I guess it felt like getting to Ace part dragged. Um, yeah, so anyway, look, yeah, I, I thought it was it was fun, but it, it, it's it's one of those like, oh, it's a good arc. It's somewhere in the middle of all the arc rankings in One Piece, in my opinion. Yeah, so when we get to the point where Blackbeard comes, he goes under the cloak, I was like, yeah, okay, he's taking the Tremor Tremor fruit. Knew that was happening. Um, and uh, yeah, he did end up getting it. And then we get to, uh, you know, in between all this, one of the reasons why the pacing also kind of drags on a little here is because in between it you also have in between Luffy getting to places you have all those uh, all the straw hats in their own little environment getting their own little training or trying to overcome some little obstacle and everything like that and I have to say here this is where they gave Robin her more manga accurate uh, look and it's terrible I hate to say this but Robin pre time skip like pre marine Ford arc looks amazing the design is so cool and then she just looks eh in post Marine Fall and everything. So yeah, and she gets treated the worst out of everyone. You know, the way like she's full on captured and everything. You looking at the way she dresses, it really feels like people you know abused her. If you know what I mean, and uh, it, it's just really sick to think about the amount of stuff that she goes through when you have like. Chopper on some bird island or Sop is getting fat, Nami in Sky Island place or whatever. After the two year time jump, I was really hyped with everything to come. Luffy, you know, obviously dealing with uh, Ace's death was really sad. But like I said, because I didn't really care for Ace all that much, I didn't really feel and, you know, work in tandem with Luffy's emotions and everything that was going on. Then you, then you have the backstory of when they were kids and you introduced the Sabo and everything like that. And it just felt like this was too late. Maybe if you gave me something like this, well before even you know a bit before uh marine ford war arc i'd be like yeah okay that's cool uh, but then you didn't want to do that because you have to introduce sabo later so i was like oh ace has another brother and everything and i i didn't watch this in the anime i started watching the first few episodes and i was like yeah this is really bad i can't watch this i read the manga of it and then i went back to the anime when we came to the time skip itself it looked like it was a really nice sunny day but the weather keeps on changing too much so i'm gonna have to stick with using these lights and get on with this. So now we are into uh, the Fishman Island. Obviously the Return of the Shabri arc is really good and everything like that. Uh, but going on to the Fishman Island arc, I was really disappointed. They built up to this so well and everything and it was just so boring and you know everyone was so overpowered which is makes a lot of sense because you know they went to two years of training and everything like that. But then when they came back, I was like, come on, just easily whoop their ass and get over this. Like, just, just finish it off and move on to something else. Because this was so boring. I didn't care for the villains because they were just kind of like the Arlong pirates. And, you know, that's one other thing. I Kind of like when I think about what happened with Robin during that time jump, like before she met with the Revolution Army and everything like that. You know, Nami went through a whole lot of shit with Arlong pirates and everything. And it's, it's hard to imagine. One thing, like, One Piece doesn't gloss over a lot like there's slavery there's clear racism with the fishman on island and everything like that and there's also rape and stuff like that and i don't know if like all this kind of like the whole prostitution thing is is really i think it's really glossed over in one piece for a show that deals with a lot of serious topics as well kind of implies that that kind of stuff happens but then never really goes into it and uh, it definitely comes over in wano itself from the fact that the shogun has all these girls has there's all the um I can't remember what they're called then in um, Wano and stuff like that, but they're basically, it translates to prostitutes and stuff like that in there and everything like that. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but one of those, I just wish that wasn't so glossed over, especially when the show, you know, deals with racism is clearly the topic of the Fishman Island arc and everything like that. So they have Jinbei and Luffy fight, and I don't really know why, it felt very useless um, when they actually had a plan and everything like that. The Queen's flashback was very nice and especially the reason for why the brothers sing and dance so annoyingly. I found that very moving. Um, but yeah, they had Tom's brother in it and Frankie and that was so barely explored. I don't know why, you know, you, you had something like that. It's like a really good chance to further explore Frankie's character, especially since we haven't really done anything with any of the Straw Hats beyond 
Luffy for like the past hundred episodes plus because of the Marine Ford and Impel Down arc and everything. So yeah, I also did know that um I had a f I, not that I knew, but I, I when I was watching this, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I know Buggy's gonna become a warlord. I just had that feeling. Anyway, um, yeah. So the princess in the Fishman Island arc is so damn annoying. One of the other examples of why I just don't get, I hate the royalty in One Piece, and not because they're scumbags, because a lot of them are, but because the young future generations, every single one of them just seems to be so helpless and useless until Luffy comes and then just changes something. I mean, she still seems pretty useless in the ravine and everything like that. I, I'm probably saying that wrong. Ravir, rever, reverie? Whatever, when the meeting happens and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I found her so annoying. And Fishman Island arc is easily one of the worst arcs. In, you know, it is, in my opinion, Fishman Island arc is the worst arc in One Piece. It was just so disappointing, and I was just like, just get this over and done with, and let's move on. Uh, Punk Island arc is so much better, because that's what we're moving on to now? Really? That quickly? Holy crap. Punk Island arc. Punk Hazard. Yeah, it's Punk Hazard, yeah. I, I love Punk Hazard. Um, it, it was, it's... I feel like it's what Water 7 was to Ennis Lobby. It's like a really good lead up to something huge and amazing that really expands on the world and, you know, kind of delivers that killing blow for the viewer itself in a sense. And I love seeing Trafalgar War. He was really cool. He saved Luffy and everything. And uh, obviously Kid and them all in Shabadi and everything. That was really cool to see the whole uh, worst generation and everything. And then uh, he's seeing him... Why am I blanking on the gas gas fruit guy's name right now? Oh, I don't know. I'm blanking on his name right now, which sucks because I actually really like him. Sure, he's a real bad person, but I really love him. He's so fun and entertaining, especially when you get to Whole Cake Island and everything like that. Um, yeah, so how this whole thing is tying up and leading up to um, Doflamingo was amazing. Doflamingo was set up to be the perfect villain in One Piece. And when we get to Dressrosa... You know, let's just get to Dressrosa now, because you know I love Punk Hazard. Dressrosa was pretty good, but some fights don't interest me. It was really dragged on, and overall had terrible pacing. Terrible pacing with Nami, Chopper, Brook, and Usopp being so annoying in this arc itself. I, I am really annoyed by how uh, scared Brook got in this arc. How scared Nami, Chopper, and Usopp always are. I know Usopp wants to become a brave warrior, but like I said about you know having that steady growth or that character development, and everything like that. If you compare how he is now to how he was back then, he still every now and then he will have his one. I'm a brave person. He does something, and it's really cool. And he had the same thing going on at the start of One Piece as well. I do not see his character arc going anywhere. And people will say, oh, but the moment he starts to become brave, he's accomplished his character arc and stuff like that. And then he has nothing else. Well, one thing you can do is either give him something else to work for or slowly build it, have him building up the courage, you know? And it, it sounds so difficult to do because it is. You give him such a general thing where it's, you go for several hundred episodes, 900 episodes, it's going to get annoying the fact that he's always so scared. And I personally am really annoyed with it itself. But although I do find him fun, entertaining and everything, uh, oh, saying goodbye to the Going Merry. I completely glossed over that. It was so emotional and so well done. Oh, man. Luffy doesn't know Soga King's Luffy. Uh, it was off either. That's, that's actually really cool as well. But anyway, getting back to Dressrosa itself. Like I said, this was a very disappointing arc because the pacing was terrible. I felt like Doflamingo could have been a really good villain. And he had a very nice backstory in everything. But it was just everything else that was going on. His minions, they felt so weak. And I was like, how is Frankie still just boxing with Baby or whatever his name is? And, you know, although his backstory is also very sweet, I just didn't care. Because I was like, get this over and done with Frankie. Kill him already or beat him. Well, obviously, he's not going to kill him because it's One Piece. But beat him up already and stuff like that. Zoro was taking so damn long with that stone fruit guy and everything. I'm like, come on, Zoro, you're ten times better than this. Do it already. Yeah, I, the whole toy thing was really cool. I'm not a fan of how Usopp... Kind of just took her out like that because I was supposed to just watch the little fairy tom tom people or whatever just get burnt twice and I love that I think I have it written down here somewhere like that um why why didn't Crocodile have Haki he's fought Whitebeard before maybe he fought Whitebeard so long ago that was beyond white before Whitebeard knew about Haki but then how doesn't Crocodile know about it he's one of the seven warlords he would have met all the other warlords 
he doesn't use hockey and it was so it was very lucky that he didn't use it in anything like that but anyway back uh, to everything law gets trashed and shot he still survives and yes that does happen a second time but i'm referring to the first time where he, he clearly gets beaten up and it's not him switching out bodies while watching i read comments on crunchyroll and there were a few talking about how watered down episodes are i don't know since i can't compare it to the manga but pacing wise i feel it like so i'm sure manga wise one piece is amazing because it would not have this pacing issue which the anime has but holy crap Dressrosa really was bad because of the pacing. I would love to say Dressrosa was the best arc, but I just I just couldn't get to it. Life of the Last King still seemed a little off when he had a 20-something year old man marry a 16-year-old princess. But yeah, when the toys became human again, I got back into this arc, although I'm not a fan of how they defeated Sugar, like I said. God of Sop was funny and everything, um, but a little hard to believe that everyone found him like that. Kind of reminded me of Buggy. Yeah, and then here's one thing which I did question a lot. Uh, because in Punk Hazard, they did a really good, good job introducing um, Trafalgar Galore in a bigger role. Um, and then they had, uh, you know, Smoker's John back and everything like that. Why I say Smoker John? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. So, uh, Smoker's back and everything. And then he does a whole switching of hearts out. I don't know why he didn't do that with Domingo's heart. Or he didn't do it with anyone else. A lot of comments complained about milking the episodes. And others said it's better to milk it than have a lot of filler or go on a break. A break would be best for a series. Um, because, you know, miss out on a few episodes, it's fine, at least when someone watches or when you look back at it, you know, I wouldn't be complaining this much about pacing, which, yeah, really sucks. So you go to these other fights I don't really care for, Snot guy was really shit, um, and he's like, oh, his flammable snot, yeah, you burnt the little people twice and they're still fine, so clearly your snot isn't that bad when it's burning people or whatever. Um, the whole straw hat fleet was really cool to see. I kind of don't like how Rebecca still calls Luffy Lucy. It's so annoying. Just call him by his right name. I feel like Luffy would correct you on that. But um, yeah, the guy of the barrier, barrier fruit and everything. That was really cool to see. And uh, yeah, oh, it was oh in the at the end, especially with the whole Marine Fujito or something who does the gravity fruit um, thing. In the end, that whole arc, the ending of the arc was really good. But it was just like the whole journey of the arc was just, especially with Punk Hazard setting it up so well. This could have been Ennis Snobby levels, but it was not. And it's, it, yeah, it was disappointing. Okay, so then done with Dress Rosa. As you know, I'm clearly disappointed by it. I think Punk Hazard was far better than Dress Rosa and everything like that. You go to Zoe and we are slowly getting there. Um, almost to where the anime is at now. Zoe Arc is alright, it's not great. It, it's basically like Punk had to, like, similar to Water 7, where it's kind of just setting up, Impo Down is setting up the next arc and everything, so it was fine, you know, it wasn't that great, it's it's not that strong. And the minks are cool to see and everything like that. And then we get to Whole Cake Island, which was, you know, while I was watching Whole Cake Island, I thought Whole Cake Island was peak One Piece. I was like, this is so good, it's giving me, making me care for Sanji. And obviously it does the typical One Piece thing where they're like, okay, we'll, we'll split up so that way Oda only has to write for a few characters and doesn't have to try to fit every character into it. Um, but no, overall, you know, seeing Be Beiji and everything, uh, it's, it's, it was such a really well-crafted arc and it did so much to kind of make me care for Sanji, which Whole Cake Island itself, all the little islands itself putting, uh, her and Sanji so cute and I did see her betrayal coming but you know in the end she really did care for him and it's so sad how she doesn't end up with him maybe in the future but um who knows at that point it still sucks having to see Sanji basically go back to being the Sanji he was before Jama 66 except now he's stronger because he has the little canister and thing anyway um I was like wow how are they gonna beat Big Mom like Luffy's struggling against his, her eldest son and everything and um no they don't end up fighting Big Mom he she comes back in uh Wano so uh yeah that was very surprising I thought this the arc was very well paced and everything until they got to the point where they had to try to escape and I felt like the fight in the mirror world was taking way too long against um the donut guy I can't remember what it was you yeah. know but uh yeah and then them trying to sail the sea took way too long Jinbei joining the Straw Hats was really cool to see and everything though. Yeah, I felt like overall while there were some really good character moments, once again the pacing let this arc down. It's still in by no means a bad arc. I think this is, you know, how you have S tier, A tier and stuff like this is definitely A tier up there. So, but then one thing I did forget to mention is Pedro's sacrifice. 
Once again, he, he actually did die. Um, unless suddenly he comes back in a future arc or something. But uh, yeah, I didn't care for when he died. Because I was like, one, he self-exploded earlier on in the arc already. And he survived it because of the mirror. And in this one, he self-explodes again. And this time, he actually does die. But at that point, one, I've seen so many fake-out deaths when a character dies. Unless I really care for them, I am i don't care. So at this one, I was like, yeah, I don't care enough about Pedro to get emotional or anything like that. And then we're on to Wano arc itself. The, what is, if, see, I've got to depend, wait to see how it ends. But if this keeps up the pace, holy crap, Wano steps up the animation. The fights, at least the fights for the first half of it are really good. Um, because after that, they have, they, it's like they had really good animation for the first few half fights. And then like, not just the anime, where they're animated, but... Yeah, the way they animate, sorry, because they're not that really slow paced. There's actually so many things going on and everything like that. And um, I, I have to admit, it looks amazing. The pacing is so well done. The characters have something to do, which is so good. And, you know, a good part of it is focused on Zoro, my favorite character. So I love to see that. Luffy trains, which is really good to see. And it's not just like some time kit, time kit, some time skip training. And it's not like, oh, he just, oh, I think I have second and third gear I want to try out. And then he uses it and he's so much more stronger now. No, he's actually training on how to use this hockey, flow of hockey thing and everything like that. Oh, I forgot to mention bounce, bounce, man. Everything was really cool to see. But um, yeah, Wano is so well done. Combining it with the meeting of all the kings and everything like that. Now the seven warlord system is gone. That's going to be so cool to see. Um, it's just, it's just that one of the arc is just building up to something that's going to be amazing. And I just can't wait to see how it ends because I just love everything that's going on with Wano right now. Let's see if, do I have anything I might want to mention? They do, uh, I forgot to mention the whole cake. They reuse the heat, heat fruit from a filler arc. But now we know that if someone dies, then you can get the fruit again. So that's probably what happened. Um, Ho Ho Hawkins, Hawkins powers feels like Nen because I have read Hunter Hunter, and he's using the cards, and his cards also do self damage to some of his himself or the crew and stuff as well. So it's really it's really cool to see um, that type of power. I wonder what it's what the actual details of it are, but I don't think we'll ever find out. I like once again, like I said, I don't like Mononosuke, Momonosuke, Momo, Momo. Momo. I'll just call him Momo. I don't like him. He's annoying like all princes and princesses. Um, he, he's just a real, like, real, a real annoying little guy. What I do find interesting is how sea prism stones have had a lesser effect. Because, yes, they do have weaker ones when uh, Luffy's um, in prison and everything. But then the nail hits L um, Law and he's able to take it out and everything. He's not severely weakened by it. I remember when Luffy was in Alabasta, he held onto the bars and he was completely gone. In Ennis Lobby, when Robin was walking around with handcuffs, she was still able to fight back, run, do all these kind of stuff. So it's interesting if they actually see Freedom Stones don't work as well against all these tougher opponents, but then it also depends if you have like, if you encase them in like they do with Doflamingo and all these other people in a huge chain of see prism stones it's different so obviously a nail i guess would make sense to be weaker then i don't also don't get what the point is of shooting a nail at someone if they can just easily take it out and be fine like law wars but uh yeah how does entering it actually work because we see in the flashbacks with odin some which are really good i love the i remember before the episode came out i was like i love how odin's gonna die from boiling and then he's like odin isn't odin if it isn't boiled and everything like that it was really cool to see uh, but i wasn't sure how i felt about him at first because uh, he just seemed like a kind of like it was a kind of unlikable character but then obviously one of my favorite actor episodes is i think 967 or something it was odin we see roger go on all these journeys yeah 967 he goes on all these journeys to all the same places luffy went it was so cool to see they play big soccer so much there but yeah Mono momo sisters being that um blue head girl and everything wasn't too much of a surprise um and although the owner her owner was a good guy i still do wonder like the amount of bad stuff that um, Orochi did to her as Shogun and everything like that and he was really obsessed with her all this kind of stuff and it's one of those things which I just feel like is gets glanced over glossed over and I feel like it's shitty Cartesian that's it Court courtesan whatever however you sp pronounce that but then you go into stuff like Yasu's death which was very emotional he was a character he was like it, I cared for him enough that I was like, oh, I find him so enjoyable when he died. I was like, oh, man, this is sad. And it especially did help because Zoro did have a relationship with her, him. And his daughter was also there. And 
it, it worked there, I'll say. I didn't really cry, but I did find it emotional. Okay then, and then getting into what I wanted to mention earlier itself, one thing I don't really get about Wano is the geography of how to get in there. Because when Luffy and crew went there and they went to get inside, there were no defenses by Kaido. But then when you see that big Mama's crew comes in, there's all these defenses and everything. And when Luffy's crew did, they went up a waterfall. And when they got to the top of a waterfall, there was that whirlpool which Luffy fell into while the others went upwards. And um, when Big Mom's does it, um, they, they're going up the waterfall. Um, and then when they get knocked off, and then they fall into the whirlpool. And I'm just assuming maybe they already went up the first waterfall or something. But then, yeah, they just didn't show it or something. But then when you go to the flashbacks, the Minx, dog, dog whatever the dog and cat cat viper come on dog storm yeah dog storm and cat viper they they managed to get into the up on the first waterfall because they went into the whirlpool and wandered up in kuri so then how did they get up that first waterfall it really don't seem like they could kind of follow the fish and get up that waterfall and then you also have that fish man who ends up becoming one of the nine samurai or whatever and he the fisherman, he says he got washed ashore with his mom or something. Like, how did you get up the first waterfall? Or is, like, it? Did, you wouldn't have tried to go up there unless you unless you tried to. So I can understand if, like, Whitebeard and stuff did it. They're like, hey, look, that waterfall's going. There's, it looks like there's landmass up there. Let's go explore it. They get up there, the ship gets wrecked, and they end up in um, Kuri and stuff like that. But then I just don't get how that works for, you know, the fishmen and the minks there. But... And overall that kind of brings it to the end because now we're going to into the fight itself. The anime revealed early that uh, uh, Zoro has Conqueror's Haki and I was when I watched it I was like oh he's also got red Haki that's interesting maybe that's just a, they did it for like animation style or something like that but no when I went, was on TikTok I found out that it was revealed early by accident or maybe not by accident but they revealed it early or whatever. But it's getting very hyped now. What is it, 984? Is that what the episode I'm on to is? Let's quickly double check. 984 episodes of One Piece. I've gone over arcs one by one. Now I've got to give you my ranking of each arc. So I found out that uh, my camera stopped recording that end of that. So let's rank each of these. I'll tell you my most favorite arcs and my least favorite arcs. And then we can end this video off here. So my most favorite arc is easily... Uh, Ennis Lobby, I was gonna say info down by accident. Ennis Lobby, Wano Country, Whole Cake Island, and Water 7 are my favorite arcs. Then after that we would have uh, Skypea, Sky Islands, however you want to say it, Punk Hazard, um, Alabasta, and East Blue. And then beyond that we'd have Thriller Bark, um, Dress Rosa, and Zoe. And then last but not least, Fishman Island. So, if you have watched, enjoyed this video, a very long video talking for over an hour here. I hope you like that, hit that like button. Oh my god, I'm struggling to speak. Hit, please hit that like button, leave a comment down below what you thought about One Piece itself. Are you going to watch it? Are you watching it? What's your favorite arc? Um, I know I've talked for a long time and I've probably died down every so often here and there. The lighting was also bad at times because of the weather. But nonetheless, um, you know, if you really enjoyed it and want to know my thoughts on One Piece, there you go. Uh, it's also very messily delivered because there's over 900 episodes to talk about. 984 episodes. <laughs> there's so much to talk about. But I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, nonetheless, I'll catch you guys next time. See yous.